is their prominence in the Christian calendar, unlike the other apostles, saints Peter and Paul are assigned a special feast day all to themselves. In the Gospel, we see where Jesus made Peter head of the church. He and his successors were to be the focal point of unity and orthodoxy in the church throughout history, preserving it from error. Now, the authority which Jesus conferred on Peter, despite his sins and failings, is now invested in Pope Francis. The Pope may be infallible on faith and moral issues, but he's not impeccable. However, sometimes you get the impression that when it comes to issues of faith and morals today, everyone is infallible, except the Pope. St. Paul's background was quite different. We all know about the dramatic conversion. But before that, he was a terror to the early church. Because of his record, he'd be the last person we'd have chosen for a missionary role. God's ways, however, are not our ways. Because of a person's background or their history, we must never write anyone off either. St. Paul is without doubt the great missionary. Pope Paul VI, who will be canonised as saint this October, used to say that the church exists in order to be missionary. I would say that sometimes here in England and Ireland we have settled more for maintenance than mission, but things I think are slowly changing. For instance, next year in Sheffield we are opening up a centre for mission associated with the university chaplaincy and is going to be known as the Mission Hub and we're very excited about it. We need to be more missionary to confront the growing secularisation of our Western culture, especially here in Europe. Many people may be more on the leaving of the EU, but we sure won't be any the worst off for it as far as the Catholic faith is concerned. The Catholic Church may have contributed more than any other body towards European civilization throughout the ages, but that's airbrushed out of the EU's present constitution. And what a shame that is. Saints Peter and Paul never tried to hide their failures or struggles. Saint Peter once asked our Lord to leave him precisely because he was a sinful man after the miracle of the fish, if you remember. He wept bitterly after disowning Jesus in the early hours of Good Friday. He may have momentarily deserted Jesus through human weakness, but never malice. But Jesus knew there was more to Peter than that, and he made him head of the church eventually. St. Paul was even more candid. He said that he was merciless in persecuting the early church, doing untold damage to it. He even said once that he wasn't worthy to be called an apostle. He was the least of all the apostles. He entirely approved of the murder of St. Stephen without even a twinge of conscience. Despite their weaknesses, St. Peter and Paul eventually proved their worth. They never left us in any doubt, however, that it was by the grace of God and not their own strength that they eventually became the great apostles they were. Jesus said to Peter, Satan had wanted to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail and you will go on to strengthen the faith of the other disciples. St. Paul said, I can do all things by the power of the one who gives me strength. By the grace of God I am what I am. To prove their love, both laid down their lives for their master. Paul was beheaded and Peter crucified in Rome around 64 65 AD. Saints Peter and Paul pray for us. Thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.